Ladies and gentlemen, you're back with your boy Brownie on a solo podcast today without my co-host Ked because we have another international superstar from Northeastern, uh, five-time Hockey East All-Star, two-time Hockey East All-Tourney Team, two-time Hockey East All-Academic, the Beanpot MVP in 2020, Hockey East All-Rookie Team, she AHCA All-American, third all-time in NCAA history in shorthanded goals, top 10 scoring in career points and career goals for Northeastern. She holds the Northeastern record for shorthanded goals with a career stat line of 87-113 for 200 points in 163 games played, which works out to 1.23 points per game to go along with 84 PIMS and uh, 14 shorthanded goals and counting. Will graduate with a major in media arts and communication studies, fresh off a dismantling of Merrimack in the quarterfinals of Hockey East. Ladies and gentlemen, Chloe Aurora. Hi. <laughs> I told you it was a lot. <laughs> Never heard like all together like this, but yeah, yeah. Hey, you earned it, man. You know, definitely. It's, it's great stuff. Uh, so for those that don't know. Chloe's a grad student, Northeastern University, um, grew up in France. I'm going to, Villar de Lance. Perfect. All right. Uh, it looks to be like uh, up uh, in the mountains, not too far from Switzerland, yeah? Yes, it's in the ski station, the snow, so it's a very small, quiet town. Perfect, perfect. So how did you get your start in hockey? Um, my town is a very hockey town, and I got a big brother who also started playing hockey when he was younger. So, obviously, I wanted to follow his path and play hockey after him. Um, and then I have a twin sister who also plays hockey with me, so I think that helped. And both my parents played hockey, um, so I feel like I had to play hockey. <laughs> um, I was just surrounded by hockey players, so I just started to skate, and I loved it right away. So. Was your brother the one that put your sister in that? Um, I don't know about that. She was. She started as a defense, and then she's playing goalie. So I don't. I don't know. She was good as defense too, but she's also a good, very good goalie. Yeah, I was looking at some of her numbers. I'll, we'll get to your time in Vermont playing with her and stuff, but um, she would see more shots in a game than Philip sees in like a month. Yeah, it's because I think we weren't very good in high school and um, her team wasn't that good when she went to college. So I think she saw a lot of pucks. Um, so, yeah, she did what she could, but I think she also took a lot of goals. But, yeah. She put up good numbers. I mean, she, yeah. you know, save percentage and stuff. She had good numbers. Um, so was your was your brother, would you say he was your biggest influence in playing or your parents? Um, yeah, I think all of them just being around a hockey, a hockey family. We also went to town hockey games. They had hockey games every weekends, I believe. Um, so as a family, we would just go to the rink, watch the guys play it. And I think I just loved the speed and I just, I don't know. I wanted to play sport. I wanted to play hockey right away. So I don't know, but yeah, probably my family. Did you have a, so were you able to, were you watching French leagues or were you able to get NHL or a little of both? Uh, it was mostly French, like, because my town is, as I said, it's a very little town, so they were in, like, a League Magnus back home, so they they used to play um, big teams from around France, so we just came to a couple games. Okay. Um, did you play other sports growing up? I know you did in high school, but growing up in France, did you play other? Uh, no, I played a, a little bit of basketball, but it was just for school. It was, like, a education, physical education class once in a while, so it was just, like, basketball, rugby, um, nothing competitive, just move around, I guess. I don't know, but nothing really around hockey. Well, I've heard from some of your teammates that you, I know you play guitar and you have, you're very musically inclined. Was that a family thing as well? Oh, uh, no, that's just something I picked up. Um, I don't know if I played come before coming to the U S but I remember high school I started playing a lot more than back home. Um, I think it's just a hobby on the side that I picked. It was something relaxing outside of the hockey world. Now, I, I asked Alina this as well. How many languages do you speak? Uh, just two. I have French and English, and I okay. speak Spanish, but it's, I had to focus in English when I, when I came to the U.S. 
do you do you now as i asked her this also do you now dream in english or do you still dream in french uh i dream in english now okay okay i i suggested if you guys ever have a play that you need to communicate you guys could just talk french down on, on the face off <laughs> she was not impressed with my idea she's like yeah great thanks <laughs> speak french a little bit my freshman year we lived together in at northeastern and we used to speak french a little bit but uh, not recently okay, okay. We got <laughs> um so you played on the french team that promoted to the women's worlds um i would say looking at it it's you were part of building that program and to turn around the identity kind of like at northeastern a big part of both you know yeah, I started Team Friends when I was 14, and I played with, um, I think the oldest was 31 years old, so I got a lot of experience from those players. And I think that I've been there for almost 10 years now, and I think it's um, I got a lot of experience in a few years because I had to. They were all older than me, so I'd, I kind of had to be mature right away, and I think it helped me make that transition with um, both Northeastern and Team Friends. And you're... Um... Uh, I don't want to say her name wrong. Julia Mespled? Yeah. Okay. She was, so she's at UVM. She also played with you at Vermont Academy and on the French team? Uh, she, we didn't play together at VA because she, oh, okay. a few or three years later, she came to you. Yeah. So she only had one year at Vermont and it was last year, I think. So she came after me. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's always good to see, you know, people that, you know, from other parts here playing in hockey East. I mean, that's just, you know. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Especially a French girl. Cause um, she's been playing with me a little bit in France. So it's, it's great. We talked a lot and she wanted to kind of follow my path. So she went to VA and then now she's doing her own thing at Vermont. So it's good for her. Well, speaking of VA Vermont Academy. Um, so similar vibe as where you grew up. I mean, it looks very similar. Yeah, a quite a very quiet town for sure. Um, it was a lot of green and mountains and a lot of ski people there. So I just I loved it. I fell in love with the place right away, um, just because it was so similar to home. So it was it was easy for me to adapt. Uh, I don't want to give away my sources, but uh, he's very scruffy and he stands behind the bench. Told me that uh, <laughs> when you got to Vermont, you barely spoke English. Yeah, I. I mean, you a couple of things, but I could not put a sentence together. So it was, it was something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that he, you know, he talked about how impressed he was with that fact alone that you would be willing to move to Vermont without being able to speak the native language. It says a lot about you and your focus and everything. I think, I think it's great. Uh, it was complimentary for sure, what he said. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Definitely tough because I was scared of, being lost, which I was, but my twin sister came with me, so it's so much easier to process and learning English, being there not alone was very comforting and it was easier than by myself. For mm, sure. For sure. Uh, so at Vermont Academy, you played hockey, soccer, softball, and tennis, it said in, in the in the bio. Yeah, I played softball one year and then it was okay. I was so I had to change sports. <laughs> <laughs> was <laughs> Was it one of those schools that you have to, if you're one of the athletes, you have to play a sport every season? Yeah, that was one of the school. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, and you won the Lake Regional Championship going 35-2-2, two and two, and you won the D2 Championship. I mean, not a bad year. You know? No, it was definitely a fun year. The coach, um, Lisa Marshall, was new there too, so it was definitely a big chance for Vermont. We had coaches in the past that were just – they were just coaches and they were there, but I don't think they were as competitive as I was. So it was definitely big trends in both VA and myself. It was, it was very good. Well, how, so going from uh, Vermont Academy to Northeastern, how did you end up at Northeastern? What, were you looking at other schools? Were there other schools you were talking to? Um, no, I was, I was very young at 14 and Northeastern already doubted me and um, started talking to a few people around me. I heard Northeastern University right away. Um, I think they made me want to move to the U.S. because um, that was an option for me. I I didn't necessarily look at other school, but I did visit a few other school. Uh, Vermont was one of them. I visited Vermont. Um, it's not I wanted to go there, but I wanted to have Plan B or other options. Nothing happened with Northeastern um, in terms of either school or hockey. So 
Um, but Northeastern was something I was pretty set on right away. Uh, Alina told us in the interview that um, you were a big reason why she wanted to come to Northeastern and not only to play with you, but to not have to play against you was, was very appealing for her. <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually didn't even know she was coming until I committed there. I think she, they told me after. Oh yeah. Okay. I was, I was so happy. Cause I didn't want to play against her either. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I will say, and I, I talked about this, I think with every player I've interviewed, I bring this up. I got to carp. Let me coach carp. Let me go to one of your practices. Um, and uh, I can't get over the enthusiasm you guys have for each other and supporting each other in the most mind numbing, boring. I mean, we've all done, if you played sports, you've done practice and it gets yeah. repetitive and it gets boring. You guys have a way to elevate it and to make it fun. And I just think it comes from you and Alina and Murph and, you know, all the leaders, Megan Carter, Katie Knoll, that just kind of filters out through everybody. And I just think it's, it's, it's really something remarkable. And I, I hope you guys real all realize how lucky you are to, you know, be on this, in this group. Yeah, we're. I personally realize that every day, just because we're so grateful to be here and just sitting in the locker room and the fun we have, we listen to music, we sing together, and it's just we're here. But we're also so grateful to have the chance to be in that locker room and I don't know, just be around people, make friends, make memories. But I just I love being here every day. It's so fun and um, as you said, we score a goal and warm ups and we're just all screaming for each other and it's just yeah. it's just awesome. We love it. Yeah, it's 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 fantastic. Um, I wanted to ask you. So, you number twelve. Any significance to the number? Um, I don't think so. I think I started with number ten, and then I played with eleven, and and then I got twelve. Um, I don't know. I think I started playing with twelve one year, and I was able to keep that number for a couple of years. So I think I just kept it for more years, and now it's the best number. Well, well I was going to ask you because internationally it's seventeen, right? Yeah. Is there any no significance there either? Just whatever they gave you, or was there? Um, yeah, my first number was seventeen in Team France. It's just whatever number they had because I was one of the youngest, and someone right. else was twelve, and she's not ready to leave yet. But <laughs> whenever she leaves, I don't even think I'm gonna take twelve Team France just because I'm used to seventeen, and now it means something to me in Team France. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so in the same line of, of the significance of the numbers, do you have any, any pregame superstitions or any routines that you like to do that you're willing to share? Um, it's funny cause I actually don't have any rituals or I usually just do whatever I feel like doing the night before, um, the morning I also do whatever I want. I don't have like, Oh, I have to eat this food then I have to get this type of food. Um, I'm pretty chill until I get to the rink. I get my game day um, mode on, and I just doing just doing myself. I don't have any specific things, but I do put my left gear on before my right one. Oh, so the whole left side and then the whole right side, or yeah, I put like left skate and then right skate, and then I would put left shin pad, right shin pad, left gotcha. elbow. I don't know why I just. No, oh, hey, everybody has their own their own thing. Uh, so besides the guitar, I also was told that you're uh, very artistic. Uh, do you have like a favorite medium that you use? Are you like paint, sculpt, draw? Um, I do videos the most. I'm in the video production field a little bit more, so it's more media art. Um, yeah, I did. I did a few videos in the past for hockey and for soccer. So I just love working with sports, um, context, sports videos, music. It's it's a lot of motivation. And I just, I don't know. I just love it. Oh, it's great. Um, you also have, in terms of the arts, you also had a bit of a role in a uh, feature film, uh, Mueller's Day Off. Uh, <laughs> you guys were great in that. So. Katie Knoll told me that Alina never had seen the movie, and Alina confirmed it. Had you seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off before you guys made that? No, I haven't either. <laughs> yeah, I forget okay. how young you guys are. Um, have you have you watched it? No, I just watched our video, and I was like, "This is good." <laughs> but I don't know. Right, no. oh, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and then uh, a number of your teammates told me. Um, that you have a breakaway move named after you. 
Would you like to describe the Chloe? Yeah, I describe it to a few of my teammates because they ask me, but they just they say it's hard, but I just I don't even think about it anymore. And it's um I don't know, I just start skating and then I kind of make like a fake shot to get the goalie down and then I go one side and to go back to the other. It just I think it became natural. That's why they think yeah. it's but I'm gonna work on a few people so they can get it for the future. <laughs> I just think it's great how the 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 Northeastern account puts it out with the little TM for trademark next yeah. to it. Whenever you did it, I think. I mean, you between you, Alina and Murphy, you guys arguably you're one of the top forward lines in the history of women's hockey. I mean, you all congratulations, you're all at 200 points and counting for your career. I mean, can you just talk about what it's been like to play with those two? Yeah, it's it's amazing. I mean, I've been playing with Alina since my freshman year. They put us together right away, and I think we got used to playing with each other. We find each other very well. Uh, and then when Murph joined us after she transferred, it just it just fit right away. She was she was there and she was making the plays with us. We were finding each other the same way I found Alina my freshman year. Um, I don't I don't even think I can find words to describe it. It's just we know where each other are on the ice and we just find each other. Somehow we don't even look, we just make passes because we know she's gonna be there. So it's been fun. It's I like the speed and the, the IQ they bring and I just I love it. Yeah, it's it's so much fun watching. Oh you still there? Uh-oh. No, we're back. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. We're good. Hey, this this is the morning skate difference. This is what we bring to the table that you don't get at other locations. We just a little little Zamboni clean and a little scraping of the ice and we're back at it. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> um uh so when I talked to some of your teammates, uh they all had I mean unbelievable things to say about you. Uh Taze Thompson pointed out how she was very overwhelmed with the on ice testing because she was in your group and she was just watching you go through everything effortlessly. Uh, and she said she was afraid that she was going to look like she didn't even know how to skate compared to you. Oh yeah. She told, she told me we were doing it. <laughs> uh, Alina talked about how, you know, you're artistic and something designed. You were so good at that stuff. And, uh, the, I asked the uh, Katie and the Knowles themselves how e how easygoing you were, and this was a theme that I came out. I saw a lot in talking to people how protective you are of your teammates and how you like to stick up for them on the ice. Uh, is that just something you've always been, or is that something that developed? It's so funny because I actually talked to one of my teammates this morning, and I just told her that I was just being protective because they were proud of me for not. Um, responding to that marry my girl yesterday at the game yep. and I was, it's hard for me sometimes to not respond because i'm very protective of myself and my teammates so sometimes it's hard to walk away but yep. um yeah i don't know we just we fight for each other we play for each other and i just i don't like seeing my teammates getting either disrespected or hurt so i just even if it's just a little push in the shoulder i just i love showing them that um i'm protecting my teammates and it's kind of like if they want to touch one of my teammates, they have to go through me first. That's exactly the quote the Knowles said, <laughs> which is great. Yes, but I would, I would fight for my team every every day. So, well, sure. I ask I asked Coach Carp, and I I asked him to give me three words to describe you, and he said, "No, it's not. It's good." He said, "Tenacious, calm, and confident." And then he threw in a bonus one as a fighter, and. He said uh, he talked about how much you matured as a person in the five years that you've been there. And he said, if that this is a direct quote, if that kid from Merrimack did what she did yesterday, Chloe would have had her in a body bag five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But instead, you got off the ice. So you're right back out there on the power play. And yeah, he just I think he, the one constant theme was how much you care about your teammates and Besides everyone telling me how sarcastic you are, everybody said how much you stick up for everybody and how determined you are. And I think I think those are great those are great qualities to have for sure. Yeah, I can be very sarcastic sometimes and sometimes stupid. I'll, I'll admit it. Sometimes I I go 
on people for no reason or they just hit me but it's it's the game but sometimes it's it's you know i want to show them that i'm here and i'm 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 here for my team too and, and i f would fight them so sometimes it's stupid but sometimes it's not hey there's there's a time and place for everything including <laughs> stupidity sometimes I, I fully agree with you there all right so i have like some lightning round type questions for you quick hits first about the team and then about you yeah. uh all right so for the team so I know how you guys do the videos, right? The game day fits with everybody walking in. Yeah. Uh, who's the biggest fashion plate on the team, in your opinion? I would say Lily Braces for sure. She always shows up with either like a beautiful suit with like a like pink heels or all pink. She loves pink. So it's very flashy and, and fashion. I love it. But yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, who's the biggest on-ice chirper on the team? Who talks the most out there? Um. Oh, I don't know. That's a very good question. I don't think we have any that does that that much. Well, I know Tessa Ward graduated, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Irving talks a lot, but it's it's mostly good and like ener like energetic um, words. Sometimes she screams for no reason, but we love it. It's, but I don't know if there's. Okay. Uh, is there someone that keeps the team loose, like a nervous moment or tense and someone cracks a joke or something? Uh, I would say Christina Allard, even Allard, though, she, okay. even though she's hurt and she hasn't been on the ice, off the ice in the locker room between periods and in practices, she's always so loose, smiley, energetic. So definitely Christina. Nice. Uh, who, uh, well, who do you hate going against in drills during practice? Like, who are you going to know you're going to have to go 110% during a drill? Everyone. Um, <laughs> I don't like, I don't hate going against people because it makes me better, but right, right. Um, everyone plays 100% every time, so I don't want to go against any of them, but I would say maybe Meg Carter because she's one of the strongest D and I never get through her, or um, Lily Jovetic. She's also a very strong D. And yeah, Alina know. said when she goes against Lily, she comes out with bruises usually. Yeah, it's good. I don't want. No, to... that's good. I gotta, I gotta ask that a different way. Like, who do you, who do you get the most out of going against? Maybe I should say it that way. Um, in your opinion, who has the best hands on the on the team? Who's the best angles? Um, everyone's got good hands. We all have different skills, but uh. Peyton Anderson has very good hands. A shootout. She has very fast hands. And okay. nice. Yeah, she's she's filthy. Uh, all right, so it's 3 in the morning. Your car's dead or your electric bike, whatever you're using. You're stuck in Cambridge. You need someone to come and get you. Who are you going to call first ring going to answer? Gwyneth Phillips. She's got the new scooter or bike. <laughs> kind of like between a bike and a motorcycle. Gwen. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, oh, this was this one is just in for you and Alina. Are you guys looking to score every time on the power on the penalty kill? Um, no, we uh, we definitely think defense first, but oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, we know where we know we can beat the D. So when we have the opportunity, obviously we're gonna try to go, but defense first. But yeah, we do think about scoring too. All right, nice, nice. And this is the last one about the team. So if there's a loose puck in the corner and you and Coach Carp go in, who's coming out with the puck? Uh, it depends if we have refs or not. With, that, <laughs> all right. with refs, probably, I hope me. All right, fair hope enough. <laughs> fair. Hey, you and Alina have been the nicest about this to Coach Carp. Everybody else is like, oh, me, definitely. So you guys have been very, gen very generous. <laughs> with no rules, maybe like a... Yeah, he definitely go against the rules for sure. <laughs> um, all right, so this is the lightning round for you. All right, uh, hockey, non-hockey. So who's your favorite cartoon character? Oh, wow, I haven't watched cartoons since I was... I don't watch TV that much anymore just because... Uh, SpongeBob, but it used to be my yeah. favorite cartoon. Still counts. Know. Still counts. Um, uh, laces and tongues, in or out with your socks? Uh, it goes under my shin pads. All right, so tongues in, yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, do you have a, or did you have you ever had a celebrity crush? I don't think so. Okay. 
I didn't know if you were going to say, like, I don't know, some French famous person something from when you were a little kid. Oh, maybe you could go with SpongeBob for this one, too. Maybe SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides Matthews, what's your favorite and least favorite rinks to play in? Uh, the least one is probably Merrimack. Okay. Uh, don't like that rink and then favorite one i don't think i have a favorite one other than actually that might be the best answer ever the so the merrimack rink is it's the low ceiling is that what it is that why yeah it feels it feels like i don't know congested a little just like i don't know i just don't like it oh, hey fair enough um your go-to pizza topping uh buffalo chicken pizza is my go-to pizza okay uh black tape or white and do you go heel to toe or toe to heel uh heel a little bit next to the heel to toe and then white tape with some wax on it okay to be specific <laughs> no that's fine um all right so you said you don't watch a lot of tv did you like what was your most recent movie or get like a guilty pleasure tv show or a binge or anything um well out of binge just came up with season three and okay I have to watch this, and it's just like this young, chill show, so it's kind of nice and relaxing, but um, I don't know. I kind of watch everything. Um, okay. Action, mostly. I like action. Okay. Which uh, emoji do you use the most? Um, I think the one that's like this. Oh, like the shrug? Yeah, the... Yeah. Know. Okay. Um, do you have a current NHL player that reminds you of your game or someone that you kind of pattern your game afterwards? Um, not really. I mostly watched, um, hockey back home. Um, my mom was a fan of Sidney Crosby, so she put on the TV a lot. So, um, Crosby is one of my favorite players, I would say, but I didn't hear that McDavid used my move a couple games ago, I think. So. Oh, yeah. I like how you, McDavid's using your move. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah watching me i don't know <laughs> he might have he I, I assume he reads my blog so <laughs> i probably had your video in there uh without uh, and i don't mean this i don't i'm not trying to insult you in any way because he can go over the line quite a bit when he plays but the your game reminds me a bit of uh brad marchand yes I, I don't mean i don't mean that you go over the line i just mean that you're you're very engaged when you play uh, you kill penalties like he does another winger. Um, and like Coach Carp told me that you actually are one of the few players that plays better when you're mad. And Marchand has admitted that over the years. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I do play better when I'm mad, but it's a, it's a matter of whether I take this mad into mad I want to kill someone or mad I want to score. Score yeah. in the head, but... Yeah, I'm I'm matured enough now to be. I want to score goals to make them even more mad. But sometimes it happens that no, get it. Go hit someone back. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So this one. So start bench or cut? Okay. Start bench or cut? Pancakes, waffles, French toast. Pancake. Pancakes, French toast. So who would you start? Who would you bench? And who would you cut off the team? I would start with French toast and then pancakes and then cut waffles. Okay. Uh, your favorite pastime that's not hockey related? Um, I think walking around. Walking around the city? Just walking around, adventures, try new places for food. Okay. Um, you have a Chloe O'Roy music festival. Okay. Any three musical acts or bands or artists, living or dead, who would be your three? Oh, that's a good question because I listen to literally everything. Rap is not, I don't like rap, so no rap. Um, I would put like a country singer, maybe, I don't know, Zach Brown, like a Zach Brown band. Okay. Um, that's a hard question, too. There's no wrong answer. I would put a Rihanna in there. Oh, there you go recent and popular with the Super Bowl. And then third one, I don't know. Maybe myself. I would I would play a little guitar solo. I get myself to learn more songs. You could sit in with Zach Brown and then you could accompany Rihanna. Yeah. There you go. Not bad. 
That actually might be the best answer I've ever gotten to that question. Um, and then my last one for you, who's the most famous person on your phone that you could reach out to? You don't, I'm not going to ask you to do it, but who is the most famous person in your phone? Um, I have, I think I have a few people, but I would say Alina Mueller. She's the person that is the most famous to me. Yeah. Hey, fair and enough. I, you, I'm sorry. I, I, you cut out there. I would reach out to her for sure. Okay. Miss people, but I don't think I would reach out. So. All right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Uh, another special Northeastern edition with uh, Chloe Arard. We are just this, the Huskies just dispatched Merrimack yesterday, uh, heading into the quarterfinals versus Boston College on Wednesday uh, for the morning skate. And for all our listeners, we wish you nothing but the best going forward. And uh, like I say on every one of these Northeastern episodes, Go to the games to support the Huskies. Pound for pound, it's the best dollar value of hockey in the city of Boston. So, thank you. For thanks for doing this, Chloe. Appreciate it. All right, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Now, if I could figure this.